What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So yesterday, we did get that Nintendo Direct Mini. It was like a partner's showcase. It was, it was certainly, uh, it was something, all right. We're gonna go over that today, what was in the Direct Mini, and of course the reaction to it. Uh, it's interesting to see what Nintendo is doing here in 2020. It is a strange year, but it's definitely a strange year for Nintendo with what their release calendar looks like right now. Also, we have to talk about Spider-Man on the PlayStation 5 as we have an interesting feature slash mode now announced for it that is also getting people talking a bit about the PS5's capabilities, we'll say. And then Call of Duty 2020 hasn't been announced yet, but we keep getting more and more rumors and even leaks now from the Microsoft Store that shows it might be getting announced We'll say pretty soon. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit the like button, helps out a ton. And if you're brand new here, hit that red subscribe button down below as we head towards 500,000 subscribers. And we're gonna start today with the Xbox One and Mixer. Now, look, Mixer, it's done, right? Microsoft made a deal with Facebook, accounts are being shifted over, Mixer is being shuttered, and that's kind of the end of that streaming platform for the most part. But the last big thing that had to be done was Mixer integration had to be removed from the Xbox One and the Xbox uh, Series X, I guess, coming up and all of that. And uh, it looks like that has happened now over the weekend. And that pretty much ends it for Mixer, it seems. With the update, they removed Mixer and they also updated and moved around a few things when it comes to the event tabs and other small little details in the OS. But yes, Mixer uh, didn't work out as Microsoft was planning, obviously. They decided to move past it, partner with Facebook, who's actually been growing their gaming streaming platform a bit better than Mixer, but of course it's Facebook and they already had a ton of people on board with that service and I'm sure they can kind of try to work people over to the gaming side with advertisements and other things of course. But yep, that, that pretty much does it for Mixer. About, I guess right on time when they said it was gonna be uh, like the third or fourth week in July and if you go on your Xbox now, you shouldn't see Mixer on there anymore. Oh, and a little bit of an update to that story we had before where that 12 month Xbox Live Gold option to buy just disappeared right off of Microsoft's own website. And it was strange, it's like, why would they take that away? You just do one month and three month. Most people would just buy the 12 month because it's obviously a better deal than buying three months or even one month at a time. But as you can see here, True Achievements did get a quote from a spokesperson at Microsoft that confirms that it was intentional saying, at this time, Xbox has decided to remove the 12 months Xbox Live Gold SKU from the Microsoft online store. Customers can still sign up for a one month or three month Xbox Live Gold subscription online through the Microsoft store. Uh, and then they say, unfortunately, the company did not specify the reason why it has decided to delist the 12 month option. So it sounds crazy once again, but the rumor going around currently that kind of lines up with this is that Microsoft may be getting rid of their Xbox Live Gold Pay membership so that you have to play online that way, right? Like if you wanna play multiplayer, you buy Xbox Live Gold so you can do that. But it seems like the word right now is that Microsoft might wanna to try to consolidate everything down to one subscription that you pay for and you get Game Pass, all that stuff, maybe Game Pass Ultimate, but that online may end up being free, like online play may just be a free thing on Xbox Live. And that would be pretty big going up against Sony, who of course ch would be charging for online multiplayer with PlayStation Plus. Uh, something obviously good for consumers and it would of course promote competition, but it would be something that Sony would have a hard time countering, I would say. And uh, we'll see how that turns out because maybe they're just planning some other subscription that still has Xbox Live Gold as something you need for multiplayer. And do you remember how we were talking about the F-Zero Twitter account that got people really excited because it appeared to be registered to an email that was similar to Nintendo's email set up for their other Twitter accounts that have been verified? Well, it turns out that isn't the case and that that account was fake and I guess made up just for fun to get people hyped, to trick people, to troll. Uh, they posted uh, a tweet that is certainly not safe for work that pretty much verifies, yeah, that's not Nintendo running that account. They decided to do it after, I guess, this direct mini went up just to say, hey, look, uh, we got gotcha. you. You know, as, as I guess like a prank or a joke or whatnot. But yes, unfortunately, uh, that Twitter account does not seem to be pointing towards any actual, I guess, F-Zero game coming up. Now one could still show up, but not because that Twitter account exists. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. We're gonna start right away with the Nintendo Direct Mini Partners Showcase. 
Sure, it was a long name for a direct. I mean, we used to, we started with Nintendo Direct, then we went to like Nintendo Direct Mini. Now we're on like Partner Showcase. We're like several lines down in the title now for these subcategory directs. I don't know. Nintendo's doing some interesting thing with the Nintendo Direct format here. Uh, like I said, it was a lot easier when it was like Nintendo Direct. All right, cool. I'll check it out. Now we got to look in the fine print to see what kind of Nintendo Direct it is. Anyway, it was just over 18 minutes long, and at midnight they announced it. Then that and went live. What 10 hours later? Yeah, it was. It was certainly a strange situation. Felt like a last minute situation for me for planning. It announced at midnight. All right, sure, I guess. Really, they should have just shadow dropped it. There should have been no announcement and it should have just been like, oh, yep, here's a partner showcase. There you go. Uh, but it was just over eight minutes long and it showed, from what I could see, five different games. And uh, for the most part, they were games we already knew about, there, but there was one that was thrown in there that we did not know about. And that was part of two announcements that were very, very good in this direct mini, but we're gonna go over all of them here. So to start, we did have Cadence of Hyrule, which is getting a season pass that has three different DLCs and one is already out that came out yesterday. And then there will be two more following along with a physical copy of the game that's gonna be out at the end of October. But the DLC is fairly substantial with 39 new songs and a new story that will feature Skull Kid. Now the songs in this game are great. So like 39 new songs is Actually pretty substantial, that, that's good stuff to see out there. And then they also showed off Rogue Company, which is from High Res. It's supposed to be a free to play game, but it's like a third person shooter. But right now it's in early access, so you have to like pay to, to get in, I think. I, I looked on the store and it was like kind of odd how that was set up, but I think they did something similar with Paladins where you could spend some money to get in earlier and then eventually went free to play, but it is there and you can check it out on pretty much all platforms it seems right now in like its early access phase. And then we had WWE 2K Battlegrounds. Okay, I get, I don't, I don't know what that was doing there. That was, when I saw that, I was like, that's strange. I mean, we already knew about it. It's coming out in September, but it's like, that. okay. I mean, that could have just been a trailer they dropped on on Nintendo's Twitter account. I mean, a lot of this stuff could have been, and it would have been a lot easier. And then we had the big announcements that were great, by the way. I was very happy to see this because we've been asking over and over and over again, where is Shin Megami Tensei 5? What happened to this thing? Well, here we go, 2021. They put out a trailer for it, Atlas did, and it's going to have a simultaneous launch worldwide, which is awesome because that's not gonna be the case for the other game that they announced, which is Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne from the PlayStation 2 that I have, and I, I like that game, but that's gonna be coming out in October in Japan, and then it will follow up 2021 on the Switch and the PlayStation 4 in other territories. And I have to say, without those two big announcements, they're, there really wasn't anything really, I mean, it was the Shin Megami Tensei Direct mostly, right? <laughs> Everything else was like, Oh, okay, I guess. It's like they took Shin Megami Tensei, they're like, all right, we gotta announce these two things, just get some trailers and we'll just kinda, we'll just kinda slap them on there with some duct tape kinda. At least that's what it felt like. I mean, really, the, the Shin Megami Tensei announcements are, are pretty hype. People are very excited. I'm excited to see Nocturne show up. That's really, really cool. And we're gonna have Shin Megami Tensei 5 with a, a year on it now. Hopefully Atlas means like earlier 2021. I don't think so. I think it's gonna be like later 2021 and Nocturne will come out in the first half of 2021 with that simultaneous release because it just takes Atlas a while to localize stuff. So I'm glad all of that got ironed out and I'm glad we see Shin Megami Tensei 5 pop up. But when I heard Partner Showcase, I thought, okay, there's a lot of things they could show there, right? I mean, we talked about how there could be No More Heroes 3, which I'm getting a little concerned about now, still making its way into 2020. It could be like a Travis Strikes Again situation where it falls into January, that's very possible, but Suda keeps showing footage in a troll fashion where he's in the way of it. Uh, but like that, Doom Eternal, I don't know. I don't know what happened to Doom Eternal, right? That That's an interesting one as well. Even, I always kind of went on a limb, and I know Nintendo kind of treats it almost like it's a first party game, but like Bayonetta 3, that's technically partnered with Platinum and Sega involved as well. They could have, they could have fit that in there and said, okay, yeah, I guess Bayonetta 3 technically could be like a partner showcase game to end it off on. But they had Shin Megami Tensei 5, and I think that was a good one. However, when this was put out there, of course, it didn't do that well with reactions. And I get it because I looked at this and then I look at Nintendo's lineup for the rest of the year, and they probably could have done something to fill it out a bit more now that we're going into the end of July and we're about to start August. And the strange thing is, 
They have games that are supposed to come out in September that have not been announced yet that are just hanging out. I don't really know what's going on right now with Nintendo. It's very, very strange. Now they could turn all of this around with a couple of Twitter announcements like that rumored 3D collection for Mario. They could just show up on Twitter and say, hey, that 3D collection's coming out uh, at the end of September or something, and uh, you can just go pick it up then. Do we need re really need a build-up for three Mario games that we've probably already played? A lot of us have already played. I will say on the Switch, a, a large amount of uh, new new gamers at times are, are kind of jumping in here, so it's great that they can play Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Galaxy, but like something like that doesn't need the big buildup, right? Pikmin 3 Deluxe wouldn't need a big buildup. So to me, they can still get away with announcing those closer to the, to the game release, but it is very strange right now to look at 2020 and see nothing from Nintendo. Cadence? Cadence Hyrule physical copy? All right, but if you look on the YouTube video, it did trend number one and it came out so far with about 65,000 dislikes. Yeah, it's not going over the greatest and I get it because if you're not a fan of Shin Megami Tensei, there's, I mean, there was no point. <laughs> That's the biggest thing right now. And Shin Megami Tensei is more of a niche title. So obviously there just probably wasn't much there for the majority of people going into it. Now, if you were expecting Zelda or Metroid or Mario, they told us that that wasn't gonna be there. That's one of the reasons I made that video at midnight, by the way, because I knew that was gonna come up and I was like, I'll just put this video out and we'll go over it right here, right now, that it's going to be third party studios, more or less, showing their stuff here. It's not gonna be Nintendo-like at all, but hopefully they show up soon because they still have a good bit of the year to fill out. It's a strange year. Most of us understand that, but uh, I mean, you gotta put something out. The other companies are putting out entire systems. Uh, a lot of people are just like, okay, well, if that Mario 3D collection is a thing and it is coming out, that at least would be something. And they're just remasters. So it's like, come on, Nintendo, let's let's wake up a little bit here. Next up, let's talk about the PlayStation 5 and Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, that's a game coming out, obviously, from Insomniac, and it's supposed to be coming out this holiday, most likely right alongside of the PlayStation 5. That should be a game that you just pick up in stores and leave with the system with. And there have been a lot of questions around performance modes on the PlayStation 5. We heard that Demon Souls will have something like that where it's like, oh, you have performance mode and then you have resolution mode, right? That we assume will cut down the frame rate but make everything look a lot better. So with Spider-Man, my question was, hey, it's a fast moving game. Can we get this thing to 60 frames per second? And uh, Insomniac tweeted this out here. It says, swing through the city like never before on PS5 with an optional 4K 60 frames per second performance mode. Now that tells me that there, okay, there could be a 4K 30 that's like, Lock 30, but locked 4K and everything, of course, looks really good that way. And then I guess they have a mode where it's 4K with dynamic resolution, but it hits 60 frames per second, hopefully solid across the board. It is strange, I will admit, that we are dealing with these quality and performance modes still going into next gen. I thought we were gonna be kind of past that myself, but of course, we talked about before, as we heard with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, some of these developers and publishers, they're gonna to look to use the system as they want to, and if they're like, we're fine with 30 frames per second, we wanna make this game look even better and more uh, movie-like or, or cinematic, we'll go with 30 frames because we don't think we need 60, even though a lot of gamers, I will say now, are really getting on the 60 frames per second bandwagon more and more, which is good, because I think a game that looks very fluid, even at like 1440p, it's not full 4K, will look better than the, to me anyway, 4K 24 frames, 4K 30 frame uh, game because it just, I think it looks more pleasing to the eye in motion, especially a game like Spider-Man where you're swinging around. But at least we'll have the option. And to be honest, if I have 4K 30, locked 4K, locked 30, and 4K with, uh, you know, dynamic upscaling and all that, but locked 60, I'm going with Lock 60. Next up, let's talk about Call of Duty 2020. And what's, what's interesting about this new Call of Duty, we have not seen it announced yet. It's been hinted at, but nothing as far as official announcements with title cards and all this stuff and marketing, nothing yet. And we're at the end of July. It doesn't seem strange because then you'd think it'd come out in like two or three months. Well, it looks like we won't have to be waiting too much longer, I think, for a reveal. Check this out. This was tweeted out as 
people started to figure out that there is a demo, of course, on the uh, Microsoft Store, but it appears to lead to the new Call of Duty game at least being shown in different files. And what it says is, people have managed to boot up the Call of Duty 2020 The Red Door Alpha on Xbox One, and the game is called Black Ops CIA. However, the game doesn't let you progress past the Black Ops splash screen. And you can see several images here with that Red Door demo. Uh, so, it does look like they will probably be announcing it relatively soon, and as strange as it sounds, it could be at this Xbox event this uh, Thursday. Microsoft had talked about third-party games being there to some capacity. They even mentioned that they would probably have some Japanese uh, support from developers there as well, which I I'm interested to see. But Call of Duty would be a big one since Sony has pretty much had the Call of Duty partnership for quite a while now with the beginning of the PlayStation 4. It's starting to work more over to Sony. So maybe that is a thing, or maybe we will have Activision hold their own event and then they show it there. But I think this Microsoft event would be a good spot for them to do it. And the fact that this Red Door demo is sitting on the Xbox One store right now and people are digging into it and finding all kinds of game files and hints towards settings and locations for the game, it kind of feels like they're preparing for a, a reveal of some kind and uh, maybe that Microsoft event on Thursday is a good spot to do it. And in our last bit of news, Let's talk about Bloodborne for a second. Not like Bloodborne getting a remake or Bloodborne getting backwards compatibility with extra features or something from Sony right now. Let's talk about Bloodborne if it looked like an old school Zelda game. Yeah, check this out right here. This is called Yarn Town, and it is one of the coolest demakes I think I've ever seen. It's a Zelda-like tribute to Bloodborne as described on their page for it. It is a free download. You can just download it and play it if you would like. It's also supported on Linux and Mac, which is great. And according to them, you can explore the streets of a cursed Gotham town, hunting beasts, and uncovering twisted bosses. This is created by Max Mraz, and it's using the Solaris engine, which is an open source, free to use game engine for action RPGs, and they do come out looking similar to Zelda, but I really like this. This is such a cool idea. I mean, it's Bloodborne, but it's Bloodborne in a fashion you may not have expected it to be in. And I'm gonna download this and try this out probably later on today. I liked Bloodborne, but like, this is such a cool aesthetic for it that I think it kind of, I think it works. I mean, I have to see how hard the, some of the bosses are, of course, like this, where it's like top down and all of this, but like, it's a really neat idea. And I kind of like if game companies looked at the idea of doing little demakes as like hidden Easter eggs or like a full hidden game inside of the game, something you unlock, because this is just very, very creative. And I think it's worth a download. If you got some time, check it on your PC. It'll run on pretty much anything. So it's like, even if it's like a, a basic laptop or something, should be able to play it, no problem. And we'll finish up with a comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from the ZX saying, not everyone owns a Switch. Haptic feedback is going to be a first for a lot of people with the PlayStation 5, and that is correct. Correct. Yes, but I think a lot of people have probably tried a Switch at some time, whether it's in stores, you know, like they have the demo units and you walk up and you like hold the Joy-Con and try it out. Maybe you didn't get as in depth with it and some of the things that people still don't even realize that the haptic feedback or the motors inside of those Joy-Cons can do. For example, a lot of people still don't know that it can, they can essentially sing. Yeah, they can create music notes and all that. It's really weird but it can do it. My hope though is that Sony, with their haptic feedback of course in their controller alongside Nintendo, third party developers feel more of a push to get even more creative with it because for the most part, while these game companies will say, oh yeah, we're using haptic feedback, it, it's still not to the creative level that I was thinking we would be at when Nintendo, of course, announced the idea of, oh, it's like uh, ice cubes in a glass and they're shaking around the Joy-Con. I, th I thought, wow, they could do some really cool things with this, but I don't think I've ever really been blown away by haptic feedback yet, and I'm hoping that if all the companies, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony lean into haptic feedback, that third parties will get a bit more creative and try out some new things since it's like the default at that point. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, specifically, that Nintendo Direct Mini. What did you think about it? Because I certainly saw a lot of strong reactions online, and I'm sure it was mostly negative because, like I said, if you didn't like Shin Megami Tensei, you probably looked at that direct and thought, what is this? <laughs> That's, it didn't really need to be there. For the, It didn't need to exist really, right? They could have put Shin Megami Tensei, both of those trailers, out on YouTube and then on Twitter, and then we're good. But 
they had the direct, so let me know what you thought about that one. Also, what about Call of Duty? What's going on here? Because, yeah, it is the end of July just about, and we still don't know about a big-time game that you would assume Activision want to run big marketing on. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.